Good morning and welcome to our virtual service for the First United Methodist Church of Lombard. My name is Alex and I'm joined with a couple extra helpers today to bring you your announcements. Uh, today is Christmas Day and they wanted to share some of the goodies that they got this morning. Ella, what did you get? Um, I got, I got a pet, a pet shop plane and I got decorated And I'm at the Mexican. Very cool, a pet shop plane. Eddie, what did you get? What did you get, Eddie? And um, I got that, um, a doggy game. A doggy game. And we got these really nice toys and a bunch of other things, but don't forget that today is whose birthday? Jesus! That's right. So and with that, here are this week's announcements. Coming up this week, uh, it's a pretty light week, as you might expect. Uh, Thursday, December 30th, we have rehearsal for music and some video recording. And then next week, January 2nd, we'll be in the new year. That's the second Sunday after Christmas. There is no Christian formation hour in the morning. And we have our 10 a.m. virtual and in-person services. There are lady conversations with District Superintendent Jeffrey Bross. Those are continuing on the second Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. Uh, so that will actually be next week. Uh, you can get to that meeting at bit.ly slash ladyconvo and that bit.ly link will take you to the Zoom uh, waiting room for the actual meeting. So that's the only link you need. It will take you straight to the Zoom and you'll be ready to rock. And beginning Sunday, January 9th, we have a new adult Christian education class. Uh, we'll be reading When Making Others Happy is Making You Miserable by Karen Amon. Um, she offers stories and helpful tools from her own life to help you uh, with practical and biblical advice on how to break free from the pleasing game and reclaim your peace and purpose. Those come in paperback and they are $13. And finally, don't forget, next, uh, next week is the first Sunday of the month of the new year. It is a communion service. Make sure that you have your bread and crackers or your grape, bread or crackers and your grape juice or water so that you can be ready to join the communion service with us. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We hope you had a very Merry Christmas and we hope you enjoy the service. Good morning. Welcome to First UMC Lombard Online Worship Service. I'm Nicole, your worship coordinator, and I'm so glad you joined us here today. If this is your first time joining us, please grab a cup of coffee and find your favorite spot. Today, Pastor Luis will be sharing a, about a cold splash of water on a frigid morning after a long night of celebration. I think we can all relate to that, and I can't wait to hear his story. Please remember to say hello in the chat below to let us know you're here. And if you feel comfortable to do so, feel free to share any joys or concerns that you might have today. And remember, offering time is our time to give back to God. You can use the information now provided on screen, such as our website or by mailing in. And remember, your offerings make a difference in the church's mission. And with that, let's worship.
join me in our gathering prayer. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. How patient you are with us, loving creator, and how hard we find it to put up with the foolishness of others. In humility, you became one of us, and we keep wanting everything to be about us. You model a life of meekness and service to others, and we are convinced life is all about power and success. All creation sings of your kindness while we hurl angry words at those we say we care about the most. Yet, rather than becoming frustrated with us, joy of Christmas, you continue to forgive us. Clothe us with your love, we pray, so we might be more compassionate towards others. Touch us with your grace, so we might become more gentle people. Fill us with that peace which longs to reside in our hearts, even as we seek to continue our journey with the child of Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mary and Joseph accidentally leave Jesus behind in Jerusalem and return to find him in the temple in discussion with the religious teachers. Jesus is obedient and grows in wisdom and stature. Children of God, listen to these words recorded according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 to 52 from the Common English Bible. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search, he asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Hello, friends, and thank you for joining us on this uh, first Sunday after Christmas. I hope that yesterday was a glorious day for you all, and, and you all have a great time. Um, but it's Sunday, and, and we gather for worship. And the readings for this Sunday bring us Jesus, uh, not an infant anymore, and he's kind of... Uh, Funny, not funny the way that the readings are set for today. We jump from the birth of Jesus on Christmas uh, Eve and, and celebrating Christmas yesterday. Then we jump into Jesus already a little bit older. And then next Sunday we go back in between Jesus uh, receiving gift from the Magi. And then Jesus right away going to the baptism. So it's, uh, it's an interesting time for us. But let me share with you about the gospel this time. Jesus' family made a trip to Jerusalem for Passover every year. Some argue that this was the equivalent of Jesus' bar mixes, special trip. But Luke says that they went every year. This is another, just another, this is, was a, just another year going to Jerusalem for the Passover. It was a sign of the truly devout that they were, the fast family. It was part of the law that all Jews who live outside Jerusalem will come back during Passover. That's why it's so cr that it was so crowded in the Passion story at the other end of the Gospel writing. But not every Jew did. But almost everyone tried to do it at least once in their life. But Luke says, Mary and Joseph did it every year. Pretty amazing, really. It says a lot about their faithfulness. It's like us coming to worship every Sunday. But Luke says that they were there was without questions. They were there every year. But in one sense, it means that this trip was not that special. It was something that happened annually. Special, of course, it was a special like Christmas Eve worship. It's a special, special, but it's happening every year. Special, but not unusual. They had made a trip many times that explained some what relaxed security protocols. The men usually led the way, nothing surprising me in those days, some distance in front of the woman and children, just a little bit behind. So on this trip, Jesus was 12, like Luke tells us, not quite an adult, not feeling like a child. Maybe on the way to Jerusalem, he rooted who he traveled with. So on, that, on the way home from Jerusalem, Joseph, in the front, as soon Jesus was with Mary, who was traveling back with the group, and as soon mean Jesus was up in the front with Joseph. It was not until they stopped after the first day traveling and found each other and counted head, they discovered they were wrong. Jesus was nowhere to be found. And he says, they searched for three days. Was the three days from the, when they left Jerusalem, including the day they left, and were really searching because they didn't know Jesus was missing? Or was it three days after that? Three days after they go back to Jerusalem, or the day out, and a day back, and then three more. I know that the three days gone. It was a sign of something else, but it doesn't make you wonder. You got it? Was he gone five days? No wonder was Mary was a little bit annoying when he they finally stumbled on him in the temple. You think that Mary a little bit annoying? And she says, look at what you have done. Why did you treat us like this? It's like he was doing just to offend them, just to wound them. Why you have treated us like this? Jesus' response to his mother is even more amazing. And with layers of packing information, I think. At least I think Luke thought it was. We are, why are, where are you searching for me? Did you know I must be in my father's house? 
In my Father's house is a sense of where God lives, where, where God is, which is more than a temple. About my father's business might not mean he's already begun his ministry at 12, not at 30, like other gospel claim. But instead, it might mean that Jesus was already centering on God's will above everything else. Either way, the boy Jesus make a claim of being center of God. The good news for us today, after Christmas, is like that. It's like Mary and Joseph, our search, have ended. Jesus showed us the way to God. The scary part, perhaps, is that our search doesn't end where we expect it. Mary and Joseph searched three days for Jesus, and on the third day they found him alive and well. But they didn't find him in an expected place. The safe confine of his extended family or familiar company of pilgrims' caravans. After three days, Mary and Joseph found Jesus alive and well in the temple at Jerusalem among the teachers of the law, the very company where it all ends as Jesus is tried, convicted, and handed over to be killed. Mary and Joseph find Jesus alive and well three days in, the same depla- in a place they didn't expect it. This sounds like Easter. Yes, look, hint here of the resurrection. Jesus dead and buried and raised on the third day, and there is a new temple, Christ's resurrected body. Our searching will come to an end, a new life, meaningful life, the life God intended, but not the life we expected. But that is Easter. For now, Jesus returned to Nazareth. He disappears back into the fabric of his hometown. For perhaps two more decades, Jesus is out the way place, far removed from the center of religions and politics in the company of ordinary people just like us. Here, Jesus continued to grow in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The good news is that this description of Jesus is the description of every child of God. Praise be to God for that, no matter what our age is. We all will grow up as we respond to God's love, In Christ, we are expecting nothing else. So this morning, when we come to the realization that we are talking about a 12-year-old boy that is found, are we found what we are looking for? Are we still searching? What does Christmas did to you? This story has helped me to open my imagination that sometimes you never realize that somehow, some way, we all are looking for something, that there is something missing. I like the conversation between Jesus and his mother, a conversation that transitioned later in, in the stories of Easter in a different way. You may be thinking that Jesus is talking back, not very politely, to the mother, but Jesus is talking to the authority he's claimed as a child of God. Yes, the same authority that we have as children of God to speak to power, to speak to those who are oppressors, to speak to those who are doing harm. These 12 year old boys have amazed us in this story and the way that the story faded into the tapestry of Jesus growing and becoming the person we know later in the gospel. What kind of person we want to be when we grow up? It's a good question. You may be thinking, but I am old enough. Well, but maybe not in our, in our journey with Christ. Maybe we're still young, in infancy. Maybe we need to learn even more so. Jesus did that. So on this first Sunday of Christmas, we are invited to continue our search, to find ourselves, and more important, to find the child who was born and is our Savior. Peace be with you. It is time for us to lift up the prayers, and as you look into the service, we continue with Pat Baker, um, 
I found out that Sunday that Tom Price have a minor procedure, just prayer for a speed recovery. We continue prayer for Pastor Bonnie, who uh, before Christmas was able to go home. We continue prayer for Carl Chavers, uh, Tom Hayes, Ellen Wallace, Wolf and Bayer, Shirley Wright, and Bill Batcher. And uh, we pray for the family of Bonnie Corral as uh, we are preparing for her celebration of life next year. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. As we gather in the latest hours of 2021, hear us as we gather in your name to pray for those concerned of our hearts today, gracious God. We pray for those who are traveling to visit their family during this Christmas break. Keep safe those who are traveling on the roads and on the air in the midst of this pandemic. Give the student and the school worker among us the rest that they need before they begin a new semester. Be with us, those who are journeying throughout the holiday for the first time with our loved one who was lost this past year. And as we turn to a new year, we pray that our nation may learn from the violence and division we experienced far too often this past year. May 2022 be a year of kindness, compassion, and above all, justice. Gracious God, we pray for our congregation. Help us to begin a new year in a different mindset. Lead us all more with intelligence, imagination, enthusiasm, love, looking for possibility, looking outside the box. We pray for those in our heart this day, for those whose names I left at early and those names who are in our hearts. We pray, O oh God. Hear us now, my dear counselor, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray as we all say is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as God's chosen one, we are led to peace, to the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Because we are one body, we are also to be sinful. So I invite you to pass the peace with this word. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And your response will be, I am sinful. Again, may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And we will respond, I am sinful. If you are with your family and friend, embrace them. If you are by yourself, I am embracing you. And Alex, peace be with you. And your response is, I am sinful. We have blend with multiple gifts and we are blessed beyond our wild imagination. I hope and pray that we transfer those, bless, those blessings we have received into pouring blessing upon others. We come to this time to pray for the blessings we have received through our offerings. If you have not sent your Christmas offering, still time for you to do so, please do. And you can see on, our, on the screen the website and the mailing address. Your generosity continue to impacting us and blessing us in ways we can not describe. Humbly, I say thank you for your gift, for keeping us moving forward in ministry and mission. The work is still happening and ministry is still happening. So I'm grateful for your generosity. So let us pray. God of miracle, when Jesus was born, angels, shepherds, sage, and even animals rejoiced and gave thanks. Today we delight in our chance to join the Christmas party of gratitude. Thank you for naming us your beloved children. We offer you our hearts, our deeds, and our entire life in thanksgiving for the gift of Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
It is time to send you all into the world on this first Sunday of Christmas. Thank you, Dan, Brianna, Nicole, Alex, for joining in worship today and assist me with to, doing worship. And thank you, you all, for joining us to that time. I hope and pray that you are preparing yourself for receiving a new year. Uh, let us put everything behind. Let us have no regrets. We cannot change the past, but we can work to have a better present and an amazing future. You cannot dwell in things that we cannot change. So let us hope and pray for what we can do better next time. As we come to this time, let me send you with this word. As the Son of God came into the world, let his brothers, sisters, and siblings to go into the world, giving thanks for life in word and deed, and growing in love for God's and neighbor. And we all respond, Amen. Thanks be to God. Seeing you next year, I wish you all a blessed and happiest uh, 2022. By the next time when we gather, it will be the year of the Lord 2022. Can you believe it? Please be safe, be good, and have an amazing celebration. Until we meet again, blessings and peace to you all.